I think all of us can't wait for 2021 and Year of the Metal Ox, so let's talk about what it is for each sign. Hi, I'm Donna Stellhorn, your practical astrologer, here to talk to you today about each sign of the Chinese zodiac and what we're seeing for 2021. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the thumbs up button if you like videos like this. All right, let's just jump right in. So right out of the gate, Rat, you guys are gonna have a much better year because the previous year was a year of the Rat. And even though that's your year, the difficulty is that it's it's a seed planting time. And so of course there was a, a lot of change and disruption in the world, but there was a lot of personal change for Rat Natives as well. So as you go into 2021, what the focus is really going to be about is how you can make contacts in the world and connect so that you can get your message out, so you can find support, so you can find friends and, uh, you know, just connect with the bigger world. So there's a lot of energy around, um, you know, networking, but not necessarily so traditional networking, of course, you know, because of all the things going on. But you know, it is about reaching out to people and, and this will be more you because this is not so much people reaching out to you, but you reaching out to them and making that connection. Now we still see some volatility in your finances, but it is getting stronger because of the seeds that you planted last year. You do show that there are some opportunity for some surprise income sources, as well as your usual laser focus on making money. So what you can find is that as the year unfolds, there will be these, um, you know, little opportunities that pop up that could come and become much bigger opportunities. So as something comes up, you know, maybe somebody connects uh, with you to work on a little side project or something like that, just ask yourself, you know, is this something that could be expanded into something bigger? Uh, that's going to be key for you. Now, as I said, you have your usual laser focus going on. There's a lot of energy behind the things that you're doing. So you can see that uh, the smaller seeds that you've been planting, you know, trying new things, uh, maybe starting a new business and all of that, those are starting to take root and hold. And so you can start to see some money, you know, at least trickle in in the beginning, you know, and the first few months, there's going to be still some volatility. But I think as we get to April or May, that's going to stabilize. Now to uh, reiterate what I had said before, the where you're pulling money from is in that area of uh, friendships or, or how, how can I network with the world or how can I produce a product or service that is wanted by the world. When you do that, that's where your, your bigger money opportunities are going to come in. So I think it's important that you do some goal setting where you really uh, meditate on what it is that you want to do. Like let the universe know so that you're co-creating together. When it comes to investments, a lot of the investments look like they are connected to a company, maybe the company that you work for or a company you're very familiar with. Uh, when we look at investments in general, it doesn't look like you're going out and doing things that are, you know, like cowboy freewheeling sort of thing. It's, it's more that you're staying with um, what you feel is undervalued, what you feel has been kind of beaten down, but very familiar things, things that, that um, you know, it's either a type of investing you know well, or it's a company that you know well. Now, it also does say that you have to keep an eye on your own investments within the company that you work. So if you're doing um, some stock options through your own company, you want to make sure that the health of that company is good and strong. Passive income sources do show up for you. They are uh, very much focused uh, this time on, you know, am I making a profit on this? A, in uh, comparison to how much energy I'm spending on it. So you really do want to focus on things that are 
at least giving you a trickle, a sign that something's working. If you have been working the whole previous year and not seeing much results, that seed may not be taking hold and you may want to rethink the direction that you're taking. One of your strongest areas this year is money derived from career. That is uh, less about passive income sources and even less about having your own business and more about that day to day, you know, just putting in the work. So of course it's extremely good for those of you who do work for an employer. Um, even, you know, the 1099 type. So that means you, you have a contract with an employer, even though you're independent. So those sources of income do show up to be very strong. Well, what I think is interesting is if you are, um, if you're a business owner, what you may consider is that you have to kind of don the work shirt and work side by side with your employees this year, and that will help you activate more money. All that said, it does show again, there's quite a bit of volatility in the first couple of months uh, of the year because as we are moving into the ox energy, you're experiencing that uh, sort of still bumpy uh, old rat energy um, affecting your finances. But as we get to April and May, income derived from career stabilizes. And so that means if you're looking for a job, you've probably found one. Uh, some rat natives will have a bump up or a raise that they've been expecting for a while. That's, that's sort of um, that the energy for your money is strengthening uh, as we get past April and May. And finally, when we look at the more risky investments, those, you know, really taking a chance, you know, like leaping into something, it does show that uh, you could consider uh, riskier ventures when you are working with friends, when you are um, connecting with people that you know well or that you know professionally. And so that could be, you know, that a few people get together in a company and decide to spin off a different company from that, or that you are um, just, you know, that you have some friends and one's really good at the internet and another one's really good at sales and you all get together to put together a business. So that sort of business venture is quite good for you this time. So for Ox Natives, congratulations, it is your year. So, but of course you know that my opinion of when you have your year, it can be a tough year because uh, it means that you're starting a new 12 year cycle. So it means you've been uh, thrown onto a brand new farm. And while you already know how to farm, you know how to grow things, nothing's growing yet. So you have your bag of seeds, but you're hungry. And so you're wanting to plant seeds as fast as possible. Now that's the interesting thing for ox natives, because generally you are extremely knowledgeable about how to do the process of things. But sometimes the beginning is difficult for you. Uh, you know, the getting started, the doing something different. And that's the focus of this year is what can you do that is not only different, but that you are telling people about. This is not a year where you're going to work behind the scenes, but that where you're going to make an announcement to say, I am going to go do this. And then you follow through on it. So this is a very different type of energy, but the positive part is, as I said before, you already know how to do the whole farming thing. So, you know, you understand that that when you want to grow something, it is hard work. You know, you, you have to find what it is you want to try. And then you when you, you're trying that, you have to nurture it, you know, through water and fertilizer. You have to protect it from the elements and watch to see if it takes hold. So there is very strong energy around you know, doing career things and uh, following your goals and things like that. But you're doing a lot of the things this year out in the open where we can see you because it's your year. 
This year, you're pulling money very strongly from your career. And so that is as you tell people who you are, as you make that announcement, whether you work for somebody else or you work on your own, you are going to find opportunities, you know, clients or uh, people to help you within your job to move forward. So it's really important that you are kind of tooting your own horn, which is something ox natives don't normally do. You know, usually you just put your head down and get your job done. This time, it's very important if you want to make money to put your name on things, to uh, go out into social media and post, but do it in a way where you're saying, this is what I've accomplished or this is what I'm working on. You also do show that there is a possibility of a change in your income this year. That means that if you're working in one type of business at the beginning of the year, it's quite possible you'll be doing something else by the end of the year. Now, we don't see necessarily a long interruption in income, but you do have some short periods of time where you may be perhaps between gigs or between projects or even between jobs. And so to shorten that time, of course, again, you need to be promoting yourself to make sure that you're uh, sending out your resume, that you're talking to colleagues who have moved on to other companies and things like that. Now, your passive income sources do show that there's a potential windfall this year and that could come, you know, towards the middle of the year. Now, what you also show, though, is when it comes to your passive income sources, you know, royalties, residuals, dividends, things like that, you're tending to go back to something you've done before. It's that same old tried and true and not venturing into new things. And while I'm not necessarily saying that you need to jump into something that's brand new, it is good during this very first year of your 12 year cycle to do new things. And so try to look for, uh, you know, maybe, maybe if you always invested in one type of company, maybe there's a related or a field that supports that type of company and you could invest that way. This also does say that if you are starting a business or something like that, that you are maybe going back to a business model you've done before. And it is really important to push your way out. So if you uh, had perhaps uh, done a business where you didn't do a lot of internet marketing, of course, this time you want to do that. Or maybe you uh, in the past were not in front of the camera. Now this is really a good year for you to be front and center and on stage. So when it comes to your money derived from career, what we're seeing is that um, that in general, it stays pretty steady as long as you continually remind people that you're still there. And that is that other people could take credit for your work or uh, they could overshadow you if you're not doing that. Now, what it does show is that for your career in general, that you are dissolving some of the boundaries between you and positions that you want. So you are able to trans, um, um, trans something, <laughs> you are able to shift into something that could be more lucrative for you or uh, that could bring you more prestige. But in general, how it looks is that you're, as usual, just working really hard, but not necessarily getting all the credit and all the recognition that you deserve because you're not lifting your head, speaking up, uh, leaning into the meeting, etc. So these are the important things this year. When it comes to riskier ventures, this is actually the year to do those types of things. And so that is starting your own business or, uh, you know, launching a new product or uh, perhaps, you know, collaborating with somebody on an adventure they're doing. This is the year to do it. If you've been waiting to do it and thinking about it, you know, like getting a patent or uh, uploading a book onto Amazon or any of these things, this, you want to break the new ground. And so, and of course, breaking new ground is hard. You know, it's, it is something where you really have to put some effort into it because there's a lot of little steps to do, but it is something that, that you do know how to do. It's just, maybe not your favorite thing. So 
this year you do show a very strong ability to make money through things that you're starting that are brand new. So Tiger Natives, you guys are in the last year of your 12 year cycle. And so there is a lot of energy around finishing up things. Now it's been really challenging 2020 for you because <laughs> tigers like to not be caged. And of course you have probably felt pretty stuck or locked down or things like that. And now, you know, you may find that, that you really just, you know, clawing at the door and yet it, you know things may not be clearing up as fast in your area as you would like so but that said reaching out to people who live far away or people who uh, you've known who have moved away these this is the connection for you is is to do maybe lessen your community and more reaching out into the world and that can be very helpful for you another big thing for you tiger natives this year is to look at your rules and what you've set down as you know your guiding principles principles and see if they're still valid for you. See if you need to, you know, maybe do something different. Um, uh, like you, maybe you have a rule that, uh, you know, a, a good person puts in a 60 hour work week and now you don't want to do that anymore. Or maybe you want to split your time. So, you know, figure out what your rules are and, and really challenge those rules and say, are these still valid for me? So when it comes to where your money is coming from, you are pulling money right from the top of your chart, which really indicates that the more you put yourself out there, the more people know your name, the, the more that you say, ta-da, here I am. <laughs> So hey, you have more success. So what you really want to do is uh, really uh, be promoting yourself. Uh, you know, you may in the past have promoted your company or the company's product or the company's motto or things like that. But this year you really want to put your name on it. And that will not only bring you more sales, but more recognition within the company, etc. And so that's going to bring you the best uh, opportunities for making money. There is still some behind the scenes work going on with you. And that's, that's an interesting dynamic. So it's, it's almost like you step back, you get everything ready, and then you make this big performance or this uh, big entrance. So uh, really consider how you are balancing those two energies. You're certainly not going to work behind the scenes very much, but sometimes with tiger natives, especially when you've been caged this long, you're not wanting to do any of the behind the scenes work but that's going to be important here too so get the the prep done and then get out into the world when it comes to your investments and things like that you're going to make more money if you give yourself a little bit more education this could be more education to do a different type of investing um, but it also could just be honing your own skills for investing in general you know just to take it up a notch now this could be done very informally, maybe through courses online, or you might want to find a mentor, a friend, somebody who's doing well in the markets and say, okay, can I follow you around? Uh, you know, can you help me out? Um, this, when you are connecting through education, you can make some really good investments or find passive income sources. The other part of this is connecting spiritually to create more money from passive income sources. And that would be where you are doing prayer or meditation or lighting candles or things like that to bring you the, the knowledge and the clarity of when to move forward. So uh, one of the things is that, uh, you know, if you want to wake up in the morning inspired to, you know, find this uh, type of investment, you tell yourself the night before you do a little meditation and then you wake up with the information and you can just jump right in. So when it comes to money derived from career, it's a little bumpy this year because you are in the last year of your uh, whole 12 year cycle. And what happens is, you know, you're ready to leap forward. You're tired of what you're doing. Uh, you, you, may, uh, the, you may be with a company that's not doing so well. So, but it's not quite time to leap into something else. So there is this 
kind of, you know, like push pull sort of energy, you know, the best thing to be doing is to be capitalizing on what you know, what you've been working on for the last 12 years, because that's going to bring you a lot of money. But it is boring to you and tiger natives don't work well when things are boring. So uh, you really have to balance that energy. Now, uh, if you are looking for a job, you probably are going to have to stick with something that you have done before, maybe even going back to a company you've worked for before, rather than moving on to something new. Now, if you are really feeling like, oh no, I just can't spend another day doing the old things, then, then try to find a balance of doing a little bit of both. Uh, because the, the big time that you're going to have in 2022, when it's your year, you're going to be needing to plant lots of new seeds and try lots of new things. So getting a little bit of a heads up on that, you know, where you have worked on it a little bit this year, that's good. One of the interesting things on your money derived from career is that working behind the scenes brings you actually more money. So that's kind of like being a cog in the wheel and that for tiger natives is something you don't generally do. But this is more about hanging back, conserving your energy and really focusing on finishing up whatever projects you've been working on for the last 12 years so that when we hit 2022, you are ready to leap in. Now, when it comes to riskier investments and, uh, you know, very big ventures that are completely, you know, you have no idea if they're going to work. Those things are related to either things that are foreign uh, or people who live in foreign countries or uh, looking at. Uh, friends who have moved far away. Uh, these are the types of things that could be an indication that this is the direction to go. So for example, if you were going to sell a product uh, and you uh, fell in love with a product made in Japan or Australia or something like that, and you brought it to the United States, that would be an example of that. Or your best friend has moved to England or something. And so now you are going to talk about doing a business together. All of this is going to take more education. So, and again, that's a big focus for you because this is not the time to leap. This is the time to plan. And so we always see this very strong energy uh, on that 12th year of how can we outline what we need to do and get ready for what we need to do because it's not yet time to leap. So for rabbit natives, your big focus is on how to find resources from others. And that is how do you gather people who have the talents and abilities to help you uh, create what you want to create. So for example, if you came up with an amazing cookie recipe and you wanted to put that out into the world, you might be looking for, all right, who, who do I know who has a commercial oven I can borrow or who already has a storefront where cookies could be sold or better still in this time, day and age, uh, like a mail order business where I could, you know, connect with this person and they could help me sell. And this is somewhat, I mean, you could find all of these as uh, you're contracting with different companies. But when you're doing strong resources from others, what we are also looking is for others to contribute financially so that you're not having to put up all your own money, but that you are able to um, connect with people who say they want to invest in you. So, so when it comes to your money in general, you're pulling money really from that area, which says that other people uh, can step up and help you, but you do need to ask. Maybe you need to present them a business plan or you have to uh, do a sales pitch, but you can find supportive people who have the means to make your dreams happen. Now you also show a great deal of focus on passive income. So that doesn't mean you're not making active income. And you know, just for the record, a lot of passive income is a lot of work. So it's not as passive as it says, but what I mean by passive income is you're not necessarily so much trading time for dollars, but you are more uh, leveraging a small amount of time you're working for potentially more money. And so that would be maybe like doing a video course and then you get to sell that one course to many, many people. And so that would be the leveraging. So that's more of the focus of your money this year. So like I said, it doesn't mean that you don't have a job, but 
any side businesses or or even just your meditation you're thinking about it is all about how can i take what i already know what i already do and maximize the potential so you won't be surprised to hear that passive income is uh, where most of the energy focus is so passive income uh, includes things like royalties so that would be like uh, publishing books or courses or things like that uh, residuals that might be doing some on-camera work uh, affiliate marketing where you are selling somebody else's product so they're doing all of that extra work of shipping and all of that but you're making a commission it also includes working on a family business um, working on a business with your um, partner your significant other and it does include having your own business so and again that's it's just this idea when we talk about the passive income sources that you are taking your knowledge and you're multiplying it through other people or through some sort of automated means so that is really the focus that's where you have the most opportunity I show some volatility at the beginning beginning about this that it's not really working but as we get past say April uh, May that time then it starts to stabilize and you can get some regular streams of income coming in that will give you real clues on how to grow it there is awful lot of activities too in your money derived from career and that does indicate that you do have a job and if you're changing jobs it won't be long between jobs so there could be some shifts and things like like that but you may not get many days off between uh, one job ending and another job beginning so you show that it's possible to have even more than one job so uh, you know actually on the whole money is a huge focus for you this year in your chart and it does mean that there are some big opportunities for you now rabbit navid is when we talk about the riskier things that you can do now this is where you do show the weakness where you show perhaps this isn't the best way to go forward now if somebody is coming to you and taking your hand and saying i'm going to do everything maybe you can go forward but it's not as strong as other areas of of money making and so if you're thinking about uh, doing the super risky things and super risky things I would mean like you're investing a, a chunk of money or you're following somebody who seems to be so super successful but is not really in your sphere of influence so they're not a friend they're not a friend of a friend they're just some guru out there and so you may not know if they truly have your best interests in mind so this is where i want you to do the most caution so this this is a time because it is a metal ox year where you want to keep your resources organized and where you want to take a very deliberate steps it's not about hopping to the next thing it is about being careful and rabbit native you are careful you're very aware you're very intuitive and so that's that can really help you in this so it is this year don't get caught up in somebody's sales pitch but do things more on your own as you collaborate with others or look for people who say i believe in you here's a chunk of money here's a chunk of knowledge i will help you okay dragon natives uh you guys are doing this interesting energy of a great deal of focus on others and that is that everything that you want to do is about you connecting to somebody else it means that you're not so much working behind the scenes you're not doing solo stuff right now that even if you are a writer which is a pretty solo profession you're still in writing groups you're you're still maybe uh, connecting online with other writers and doing you know um like uh, sit down shut up and write sessions um, uh, things like that the uh, what I think that you were doing is through the connections to others you are really um, having the opportunities flow in it's like uh, you have big ideas you always do but until you reach out and connect to somebody else that idea is not going to go anywhere so that said that it's 
uh, makes sense that most of your money is going to be directly connected to other people. And that can be that you're doing sales or when you're looking for a job, a friend is helping you find it or an old boss is saying, please come back and work for us. So there's an awful lot of just, you know, how am I connecting? So if you know, sometimes dragon natives, you, you like to just take off and fly because you, you can do that. You can be in your own little world. And so the, the rest of the world, you know, us down here might look like little tiny ants, but it's necessary for you to land and be amongst us. And so that is uh, the more you reach out just to say hi to someone, uh, to reach out to knowledgeable friends, to ask questions, to reach out to people you don't know, uh, influencers, celebrities, mentors, all of that. The more reaching out you do, the more money you're going to make. When it comes to your investments, things are a little bit hands off this time. That means you want to really focus on um, how you can get investments to be so automated. You don't have to work on them. It means that there's not a lot of buying and selling. It's more of a buy and hold situation or it's just holding cash. If you have some investments and you see they are slowly deteriorating, this is a definite sign that you need to move out of that investment. Uh, if if you're seeing, you know, that it's just volatile, that there's some signs of recovery here and there, that might not be the case. But what we're looking for is if something looks like it's dissolving, that's when it's time to get out. And this is also though, you know, you have the ability this year to look at uh, you know, new investments in the way that like somebody just happens to mention it to you or, you know, you, you get, you were thinking about something and then you get something in the mail or, you know, if, if you find there's these odd little synchronistic connections that can be a sign to move forward on something. But again, just go very gently into this and don't rush into this and really talk to other people before doing so. So you have some good energy when it comes to money derived from career. You might find that you do switch jobs, but the job is fairly similar. Uh, it's not a huge learning curve or anything like that. It could be just a move within the company, uh, like you get transferred or that uh, you take a leadership role there where you start to manage a team or something like that. But in general, your money derived from career is very focused on whether you feel this is the right thing to be doing for you. Is this your calling? Is this the, the thing that you've wanted to do? Because if it's not, that's where you need to make those gentle shifts, find the people who can help you so you can gently guide yourself toward what you want to do. Um, it would be good to find ways to kind of blend the two, maybe working part-time at one and then part-time at the other, or maybe taking a role, say, say maybe you are in sales and you really want to be doing houses and things like that. And so that you work on a job where perhaps you're selling something that is similar to the houses or is related to the housing field or something like that. It's like you're just gently gliding over to that area. And when it comes to risky investments, you have a lot of volatility and um, it could be really some bumpy waters, bumpy waters. It could be really some rough waters for you, especially May and December. Those are not the best times for you to be doing investments that are considered risky. And what I consider risky investments is where you have to plunk down a big chunk of money into something that is not so conventional. So that would be like a friend asking you to invest $100,000 in their, um, you know, coffee business or something like that. And it's, it's just, this is not the best way for you to go this year. It's, it's great if you want to do some sort of partnership, but it needs to be quite an equal partnership. Uh, or you do need to find someone who is a mentor to that, that's going to take you under their wing. So when it comes to risky investments, if you have done these in the past, be extra careful because something that you have repeated or are repeating may not go as well. So you might be 
saying to yourself, well, I've done this type of investment before, but that's the thing that could trip you up. So be really cautious if you are doing something uh, that normal people would consider risky, you know, non-dragon people would consider risky, and uh, is something that you've done before, because these are a couple of red flags. So for snake natives, your focus is really on how to be more productive, eliminate procrastination, and really use the times during the day to produce the work you want to do. Uh, you know, if you have been extremely busy, which oftentimes snake natives are, if you find that maybe you're wasting too much time answering emails or you get um, distracted by your phone or things like that, looking at how you can be productive, how you can do work that really is going to matter and let somebody else do the busy work or find a way to eliminate that busy work so it's not on your schedule. So there's a very big focus on that. And part of that is in taking care of yourself because if you're dragging around, if you're tired, if you're overly stressed, that's not helping. So it is to start with taking care of yourself, maybe through diet, exercise, uh, meditation, extra sleep, things like that. All of those things are going to help you be more productive so that you can spend less time working to make money and more time enjoying the money. So that said, the, the money that I see coming in comes directly from your systems. And that is, what is it that you do that you know, on a daily basis that maybe to you know get your work done quickly or to find a better job or to do uh, investing? What are the systems that you rely on and how can you tweak those systems to make them better? So uh, this is, you know, maybe you have a system for finding investments, you know, you, you find something that has a good PE ratio, it's got a reasonable beta, you know, the moving average looks good, uh, you know, it's doing a head and shoulders pattern, all of this stuff. Maybe that's it, but it still needs to be tweaked. Maybe PE ratios don't mean anything anymore. Uh, maybe you want to do a different beta because it's such a volatile market anyway. You know, things like this is to examine your systems and, and this really comes down to, you know, like how, how quickly you can make a good decision, how much you, how much confidence you have in your decision-making abilities. So that's what we're talking about here. And, and of course, eliminating distractions. You do show a little bit of bumpy energy when it comes to investments and passive income sources. You may have had some real difficulties in 2020, and so your accounts are recovering. It is a good to examine, you know, what went wrong besides the bigger pandemic -y picture what what really you know where could you have made some different choices or where did you maybe allow somebody else to make the choice and you didn't make the choice so now all that said you do still once you have your your systems in place you do have opportunities to make passive income and greater than you have in previous years because you're healing the issues that you have around it so your issues may have been that you were burned years ago and you haven't gotten back in or that you just feel like it's just overwhelming there's just too many steps and so it's time to break it down into manageable steps so this over the course of 2021 you can go from you know feeling really like oh passive income sources is just really blocked and i'm really struggling to actually doing better with passive income sources than you have in a long long time when it comes to money that is derived from career all your job opportunities do come directly from individuals so this is less about you know putting your resume in a big pile with other people but instead you know figuring out who you know in that industry or making a connection with somebody in the industry and getting a recommendation so this is going to past colleagues and see who they know and so you can be a friend of a friend um, it is um, about you 
uh, really reaching out to people and, and having a meaningful dialogue, maybe with a hiring manager or a potential manager to say, oh, I read your article, I've been reading your posts, I'm really impressed. And, and so you're establishing this sort of connection with that person. I do feel like that most of the year you do have a regular job. There may be some interruptions if the company itself is having some difficulties or if you are making a change in the job, there may be a gap in how much you're working, which does give you some time and energy to go work on something else, which is always good. But uh, it does show that for the most part, it's pretty stable. Uh, you know, there may be some new technology that you need to learn and that, you know, like if you're not embracing that, that could trip you up a little bit, or there could be some technological difficulties that do cause the company itself to be going through a hard time. And you want to keep your eyes open in case you need to make some sort of change. Now, when it comes to the riskier investments and those things that could bring the big win, the biggest word for you is it's going to actually be quite a bit of work. And so that if you are looking at something and it looks like it's going to be easy, that's actually not going to be a beneficial direction for you. Look for the thing that is going to be a steep climb, that is, is going to mean extra hours at night where you're studying. But but this would be, of course, picking something that you truly love to do. You know, like maybe you've always loved doing videos and you really want to take that to a professional level, maybe to do videos for weddings or for real estate or things like that. So this would be about really studying the craft, really practicing, putting in the long hours of, of shooting and editing and all of that because you love it. And then it's worth the risk of investing in the equipment and investing in the courses and things like that. So this is a, not about at all following the trends. This is very much you saying this, this is a calling I have felt. I, I really want to do this. And so stick your toe in the water for sure. You know, take, take an inexpensive course or buy a little bit of equipment. But once you say, you know what, I'm really ready to commit to this you could do really well with the riskier investments when it's something that you really lean into and work hard at. So for horse natives, you guys are gonna have a much better year this year because that opposition year is done. When we were doing 2020 in the year of the rat, all the energy was moving away from you and that can make it really challenging. Now that said, last year you did go into your first of your three harvest years. And so well, that means that you have enough energy and uh, expertise that you can really start to rake in some bigger uh, amounts of money. So that's fantastic. But the focus for you horse natives this year is for you to say, what would be fun? What can I do that's creative? What can I do that's, that is, is something that I'm just really going to enjoy? Because it, when you find something that is truly enjoyable, uh, you know, when, when you're out there and like, because it's a harvest year. I mean, picture this like, like you're, you know, picking oranges off a tree and that can be drudgery and hard. Or you could go, wow, look at all these golden nuggets I am pulling off of this tree. This is fantastic. I'm going to be in orange juice for the rest of my life. So it's very much about that. Now, there is also some energy here that says doing business with older children could be very lucrative. So that is that you have an interest in doing something and they probably have the technical knowledge to help you do it. And so getting with family members, younger relatives uh, or uh, children who are adults, that can really help you uh, do something that is fun, exciting and making money. When it comes to your investments, there is quite a bit of volatility, especially in the first half of the year. It does say that uh, you want to be cautious when you're doing your investments because uh, a little little bit, um, you know, some of the time it's, it could go down quite a bit and be a surprise to you. Or you might find that if you just invest a small amount in something that's highly leveraged, that'll be, you know, emotionally satisfying enough and you have the potential of making the money. 
Um, as we get more towards the middle of the year, uh, at least past May, well, then it does show a lot of activity is needed for passive income. I know it should be passive. It means it should mean that you don't have to do much, but this shows a lot of need for taking action to make it happen. This could mean you need to change brokerage houses, or if you were doing real estate investing, maybe you're moving to something else. If you have your own business, this is time to do a push. Even if you've had the business for years, you might have to redo your website or uh, remake your brand or something like that. So we see a lot of activity that way. When it comes to money derived from career, your best career choices are gonna be something you enjoy doing. And if you do, then you have pretty steady employment going forward and that is you might have to change companies if your company's in trouble but the it would be a, uh, a very seamless transition where you would just uh, very easily slide from one position to the next so uh, but in general if you don't enjoy what you do for a living then you do see that bumpiness that uh, that desire to not be there gets so strong that it, you you could actually risk your job. So it's very important if you are in something where you're kind of lukewarm, you're not sure if you like it, is to sit down, meditate on what is enjoyable, what are you learning, how are you growing in this job, what, are the, what is the potential, and how can what you're learning in this job or could learn in this job parlay into something you truly like to do. So, you know, for example, when, when I was thinking about opening a, a bookstore, I didn't know anything about running a shop so I went and worked for a very large bookstore a chain store and every time they had a job for someone to do I would volunteer so the bosses loved that but I was thinking to myself I'm learning how to do something for something that I'm gonna do later your strongest area this year is going to be uh, risky investments and uh, so but I of course still want to caution you I don't want you to throw all your money into something and uh, you know have it come up you know snake eyes so it, it's very important of course that you're doing all the research and things like that but investing in yourself and doing things that are highly creative where you maybe are putting a little bit of money into equipment where you are uh, especially uh, you know counting on yourself to do it those are going to be the strongest uh, really risky investment opportunities for you and by doing something creative I would mean like you know writing a book or doing a video program or uh, maybe doing a podcast or something like that where you're doing something that's creative something that's fun and you're putting yourself out there these are the things that could take off so now maybe you haven't been that interested in social media or things like that. Maybe you look at it and say, oh, there's so many steps, but it's very important to do it creatively, to do it your way. So that would be less about following, you know, some guy's 12 steps to success on with Facebook ads and more you dabbling in it and then trusting yourself that you're going to see the way forward. For sheep natives, the big focus this year is on home and family. And so you've already been home for a long time and maybe you're excited about, you know, working from home further, or maybe you're thinking about doing a business with the family. Maybe you're looking into real estate or you're renting out part of the house or things like that. But there's a lot of focus on, on those foundations. It's also interesting, this idea of looking at what your grandparents did and what your great grandparents did and pulling that uh, those talents and abilities forward for yourself so even if your grandfather was like uh, you know a blacksmith or something and you say to yourself well I'm not gonna be shoeing any horses in the near future but what what is that you know what are, what are the skills that are necessary you know maybe working in harsh conditions but doing something that you love interacting with the people uh, getting exercise while you work things like that maybe those are the energies that you're pulling forward when it comes to your money it looks like you're going for more of the tried and true ways the things that have worked for you before and that's actually quite good for you this year it's 
uh, really helpful to be looking around the house and seeing what you no longer need and selling off things. Doing things in sales is quite good for you this year. And so you could, you know, sell off excess, uh, maybe on a platform like eBay, and then you find that you enjoy it. And so you continue to do it by finding other people's items and flipping those on eBay. Now that said, you do show potential interruptions in your income in May and December. You do have to be a little cautious during those months because if you find that you are without a job during those months it could take the full month to get the new position so if it at all possible you know if you're thinking about changing jobs maybe avoid those two months if you can those are also not the months to be starting something new uh, this is those months are good for planning those months are good for you know thinking about it and talking about it but not the actual launch money derived from your own business, royalties, affiliate marketing, passive income sources, all looks very good and something that you should be applying yourself to. So instead of saying, okay, I work 40 hours a week and I get a paycheck, it is how can I work 20 hours a week and make the same money? Or how can I work 10 hours a week and make five times this amount of money? Now, what I'm suggesting is that you might not know the answer yet, but that you are planting that seed to say, all right, I, I want the answer. So you're asking yourself these different questions. And as you ask the questions, then the universe sends you the answers. So you do show that there's opportunities through investing in passive income sources or having your own business, certainly a family business, which comes up the strongest for you. These are all ways that you could multiply yourself and make more money in less time. When it comes to money derived from career, you do look like it's pretty steady. It looks like a work at home opportunity is the best bet for you or working with homes in some way. That could be home health care, real estate, construction, things like that. If you are working outside the home, things could be a little bit more volatile. So look for things, you know, where the employer says that you can just, you know, we'll give you a computer and you can just work from home that sort of thing that's that's going to be the most beneficial for you but it also says that there are multiple ways that you can make money at home and they are mostly working for someone else and so this could be some sort of gigs or contracts but also you know maybe you have a couple of jobs with different people with different companies and yet it's all done from home and so there's no uh time wasted, commuting from place to place, etc. Uh, you know, one of the tips I would give you for a strong income, uh, especially uh, money from career, would be having a place where you can work at home, where you're not just working, you know, like in the living room with everybody traipsing through, that you have a dedicated office space, but one that you like, not some corner that's dark and cramped or something like that, but something maybe by a nice window or maybe it's at the dining room table so that you can feel the life of everybody around you know it depends on your work style so find look really look at what you've got and find if there's something better you can do when it comes to your work at home environment when it comes to risky investments i'm gonna to have to caution you this year because it does look like information doesn't come in very clearly and what can happen is you can get all excited about something and get into it and find it's not nearly what you thought it would be and so do use a lot of caution and even if you are um, joining up with family members and you're all going to do it together, if the investment is considered unconventional or if it is something that requires a great deal of cash outflow from you at the beginning, this is what I would consider a risky investment. And so you want to shy away from these this year. Do things, as I said from the beginning, it's more tried and true stuff. It's more stuff you've done before. It is more stuff that you are very familiar with with, those are the things that's going to bring you money. 
So for Monkey Natives this year, the focus is on communication, sales, connecting with others, um, uh, types of agreements that you can do. You have all of this ability to say, you know what, I'm going to go do a deal with these people. Or maybe you're doing, uh, maybe you have social media accounts and now you're going to do some sponsorships or things like that. But you show a lot of opportunities by doing deals and uh, by communicating what it is that you offer so the that's the biggest focus and so the more people you communicate with in general not just with your money but just in general is all going to bring you benefit this does mean that it's probably time to make peace with your neighbors or peace with a sibling that you have had some difficulty with in the past to see if you can just you know set things to rest you know if there is apologies or amends needed on either side that you negotiate somehow to make that happen because that's going to clear the way for a lot of good things to happen for you now when it comes to your money everything is focused directly on communication which means that when you ask then you receive so if you want to raise you're going to have to ask for it if you want to raise your prices you have to ask anything that you're looking for or if you want to know how to do a particular type of investment, you have to ask. So everything is about the ask. And if you feel shy or hesitant, although I can't imagine that a monkey native would, but if you are feeling hesitant about it, or maybe you feel it's unseemly to ask for a raise or something like that, you have to adjust that thinking because that's not going to benefit you this year. Everything is about communication. Now, this is also about how you're communicating with yourself, and this directly affects your money. If you're feeling that you are being hard on yourself, like, you know, like, oh, I didn't work hard enough, I goofed off too much. If you're constantly berating yourself, you are going to run into troubles with making money. So be really mindful of how you speak to yourself, be kind to yourself, be supportive of yourself, and you are going to find the money flows in. When it comes to investments, there's some strong investment energy around real estate, especially local real estate, something that is nearby your home, or that you're actually taking a part of your home and renting it out, or maybe you're just selling your home and flipping it and buying another home, etc. So we do have that sort of energy. There's also a very strong energy for investing in things that are more traditional for your family. And that would be, you know, that your grandfather always loved utility stocks, or, you know, maybe he was into railroads or something. And what's the modern day equivalent? of railroads uh, so um, uh, it's it's more about looking at you know where you can get a lot of information for your investments so if if some company has a, you know a website and and there's articles written about it and maybe you can drive over to the company and do a walkthrough that would be a good company to invest in but if it's in some foreign country where you can't see what they're doing you don't really understand the products that they make or something like that but your buddy said it was good investment this is not a good investment this is something that is is not in harmony with the energies for you this year. Oh, when it comes to money derived from career, things are pretty steady. Uh, if you are a contract employee, it's going to be just one contract after another. And there's not much gap between anything. You also show increased luck in this area. That means you can ask for raises or you can ask for a different commission schedule. Uh, you might be in line for bonuses and things like that. If you do decide to make a change from a traditional job, uh, you can make the change pretty smoothly so no difficulties there so there won't be a lot of time between each job so no real gaps in income the only thing I would say is be mindful of the periods where Mercury is retrograde. That can trip you up in uh, that maybe you're leaving a job, but the background check for the new job hasn't quite gotten through or that uh, contract you're still waiting for it. So if you're changing jobs during the Mercury retrograde period, just be mindful of that. Uh, you can check out when the Mercury retrogrades are on my website, whenismercuryretrograde.com or if you just Google it, it's going to be there. So this year, you're 
the most difficult area when it comes to finances is risky investments. And uh, as I've said many times, I define risky investments as either something very unusual or that you have to put a large chunk of money into it to make it happen. And this is your most difficult area. So now it's possible that you could take something that was considered a risky investment that you didn't do well in a previous year. And now you have learned more, you have, you know, figured things out. You already have the equipment, you've already made the investment, and now you're gonna make another push at that, that is perfectly fine. In fact, that could be extremely beneficial. But if it's brand new and you haven't made an investment in it yet, if if it's something that not only you don't know about it, but like nobody knows about it, you know, like it's, it's not just Bitcoin, it's like crazy Bitcoin. Uh, that type of thing is not beneficial for monkey natives this year. So Rooster Natives, you have a really strong money year coming up, which is fantastic. Uh, I think that Rooster Natives in general can make more money than you made last year or the previous year or the previous year before that. So I'm super excited for Rooster Natives on how much money you can make, which is great. Now, I do see you diversifying a lot of sources of money, uh, you know, doing new things, not just working your nine to five, but doing other things. But all of your money-making ability is predicated on the idea of uh, your sense of worth and deserving. So that's where the big shift is. I see you now realizing that you are valuable as an employee, you're valuable as a business owner, you're valuable to your clients, and that you know that you deserve more. And as you uh, have this energy of, I know I deserve more, that energy uh, shifts what's going on in the universe and money, more money starts to flow in. Now, that said, there is uh, still some areas where you may find it more difficult. We'll hit those in a second. But what I really want to focus on is like it would be good for you every morning to do a little money meditation, whether you're lighting a green candle or doing a chant or just you know, walking out on your balcony and saying, okay, you know, clients and customers, here I am, come find me. So it's important that you meld some of that spirituality. And if you find like a little hesitation in doing that, that could be that you're not feeling worthy. Like you might say, oh yes, I want new clients, but oh, you know, what if they ask me a question I don't know? Or, you know, uh, maybe you haven't been studying enough or uh, you don't feel like you are uh, worth charging what you're charging. And so the, the solution is, well, then do more practice, you know, do more prep, uh, focus on getting the alignment of your sense of worthiness with, you know, what you're doing, what, what you're charging or what you want to charge. And then you'll find that, that actually the money flows in. Yes, I know that they say fake it until you make it. And that would be fine if you have belief in yourself. But if you are faking it and the world can see you're faking it, that's not going to work for you, especially this year. So most of what I just said applies to investments, passive sources of income, um, having your own business, a family business and things like that. If you feel that you deserve it because you've worked at this, that you understand the investments, uh, that you have uh, uh, found the right people to help you and things like that, you're going to do very well. If you are running into this idea of, you know, I, I don't know, this is an unknown investment. I don't know anybody who's done, been successful at this type of investing or if you you know for example if your small business uh, is on flipping maybe baseball cards but you don't know that much about baseball cards that's not a good business for you this year but if it's on you know you're flipping I don't know cast iron cookware and you love cast iron cookware well then that makes sense that you're going to do well because you're going to not only say I love this but that I deserve to make money from this because I I have done the work, the homework about this. Uh, probably the area where I'm most concerned for you is in money derived from career because it does show that your business or company or industry is going through a transformation and that can affect you. 
Now, it does show that you're pretty well connected where you work, and so you are gonna get a heads up. You might even get some severance or maybe an early retirement package or something like that, and that's wonderful. But if you're not uh, feeling, like if it's something new or you don't feel that connected, then you could be at risk for having a job change. Now, you do show a very strong money year, so I don't expect you to be without a job for very long, but you might be transitioning from working from somebody else to working for yourself or working for uh, yourself to working for somebody else or some more dramatic change like that. Additionally, you need to be quite proactive if you do sense that your company is in trouble to make sure that your resume is updated, that you are talking to uh, colleagues that have moved on to other companies, talk to former supervisors and things like that. Really, you know, kind of, you know, beat the weeds to make sure that you are really well connected if something happens with your career. The most likely time I see for Rooster Natives maybe having an interruption is in in June. So if you are sensing like like maybe a big project comes to an end in June or something like that, that would be a warning sign. Or maybe that's when the company puts out their quarterly earnings or something like that. Again, another warning sign. When it comes to risky investments, which I count as either investments that are highly unusual or ones that you have to put a lot of money into them up front, you do show that that's a focus again for your life, that they there could be something that comes in that you feel excited about, it's creative, but it, it requires you to buy a little bit of equipment or you have to make some sort of investment. And all I would say is you have to find something that you truly love, that you're quite passionate about because it is going to take some work. Up front, you may get some you know, early wins on it to make you feel like, oh, this is gonna be much easier than I thought. But trust me, by the time you get to the mid year, then the hard work begins and you'll say, okay, I was a little lucky out of the gate, but now, now I got to put the effort into it. But that said, it could be quite lucrative for you to follow uh, a, a path that's different for you that you've been interested in or to make an investment in yourself, maybe through courses or equipment or things like that. So I'm not talking about you know, just like investing in a whole bunch of merchandise when you haven't tested the waters for that product. Or if you're considering something like a franchise where you would have to put down a great deal of money, you have to be absolutely sure this is going to be a business that you love. If you're just thinking that, you know, owning a laundromat or owning a fast food restaurant you know, just as an easy way to make money, that's not in line with the energies that you're doing this year. And so it would be better for you maybe to do something that has less of an upfront investment. So for dog natives this year, the focus is really on putting yourself out there in the world. Uh, you're highly noticeable this year. You have a lot of charisma and magnetism. You can attract people to you. This is not a year to work behind the scenes or to hide out. This is a year where you want to put yourself front and center where you are seeing everyone and this will help your money as well. But how you want to put yourself out there is in a confident way, uh, you know, to find your voice. Now, being confident doesn't mean you have to be loud or boisterous or uh, aggressive in any way. You can be sweet and kind and still be confident. But it is maybe looking at how you present yourself, maybe on camera or in photographs. You know, do you know how to turn and do the angles or things like that? Clearly I don't. <laughs> so, um, or, uh, you know, how, how do you speak? Are you um, like ending each sentence on an up note because you're not sure? Or are you speaking with conviction that you say, all right, I really know what I'm talking about. And this is what is going to lead to money opportunities. Now, when it comes to your money, it's really interesting because you're at a stage where it feels like the fog is clearing and an opportunity is presenting itself. Now, it, it still feels hard to grasp hold of. It's almost like, uh, well, 
it's exactly like you've been planting seeds the seeds are growing so you do see that someday you're going to have a harvest but it's not quite time for harvest yet and so what we're uh, what you're experiencing really is that there is the potential for things happening. That means that you're going to see income dribble in in certain areas, maybe your own business, or maybe you're starting to make some commission on your job, or there's promises of things, and the, the fog hasn't quite cleared yet. And as you you know move forward uh, with more confidence then you can make the things happen more quickly so that's that's the reason for that now that all said there is uh, a couple of other really important tips for you dog natives this year for money and one is you need the spiritual connection you need to co-create with the universe and to align your energy with the abundance energy you need to align your energy with the abundance energy in the universe and that can be done through meditation or prayer or chanting or lighting candles or doing magic or things like that and that is to say that you start your days with intention you know my intention is to make this money my intention is to connect with this person for a business venture or things like that so it is very much about you focusing first from a spiritual standpoint and then going getting the sales calls done or sending out the emails or things like that so that's number one the second is is dissolving fears that you have fears are stopping you from really moving forward on things that are important so you might be saying to yourself well i want to contact so and so to do a business deal with but you know i need to know exactly the right things to say i need to know when they're going to pick up the phone or when i can leave a message and they don't pick up the phone so all of this is about you saying to yourself i have fears and to recognize that those are just fears and to let those go to let those dissolve so identify your fears and and fears are super subtle you know how how they are it is like you you need to make that sales call but you know oh you don't really feel like it right now and oh now they might be eating lunch and, and now it's your lunch time and you know and the day just goes by but that's actually all fear so you identify the fear and you just melt that fear you say i don't care if i'm afraid i'm gonna do this anyway and then the fear can go away when it comes to investments and passive income sources or making money from a business the key is who you know and that is making connections like if you want some publicity you know uh doing direct messages to people like the editor of a magazine or uh, somebody who is on a podcast who does the scheduling like really making some connections that are valid like uh, finding people that you know and maybe they have friends who have you know podcasts and things like that is is making all of those connections that are really personal and this is like one-on-one -on -one stuff this is not about hiring some person to make those connections for you it is about you sitting down and just over and over you know sending a message to people on Twitter or sending a message to people on Instagram uh, to answering comments on YouTube and things like that it's just very straightforward it's hard work but it's your personal energy connecting with theirs when it, we look at your money derived from career that's income from a regular job uh, or some sort of contract work there is some volatility this year we're seeing it especially in May and December um, but for the most part you're staying in your job and so the volatility can be that maybe the company's not doing well and that should be a warning sign for you to start looking around to see if you need to work for a competitor or if you can stay at this job and just stick it out uh, you may have to bring in a secondary source of income which you do have a ton of opportunities to do this year but it means that you know that traditional idea of just having one job and getting a paycheck and going home and watching TV that may not be possible this year so now uh, this 
This does say also that it can be a little difficult if you're trying to make a huge leap from one type of work to another type of work. Again, if you have the confidence to do it, if you're presenting yourself and you're making contacts in that new industry, you'll be fine. But if you're just jumping from maybe you were in sales and now you're jumping into, <clears throat> I don't know, um, like, a video production job well that's that's such a big leap you don't have the network together or things like that then you're going to have some problems but if you can leverage your contacts in sales to help you then you know start your video production company then you're going to do great now <clears throat> we do have some exciting energy for you in risky investments and i categorize risky investments as either something that's quite unusual to do or something that takes a large investment either in equipment or in yourself and so that shows to be something where maybe for years and years you've wanted to you know learn palmistry or to learn hypnotherapy or something like that or maybe you've wanted to do a franchise uh, maybe you wanted to do like a tutoring company or something like that and you wanted to do a franchise this is the year to really consider it now Again, we're talking about having confidence. So if you're in, uh, looking to invest in something that you don't know much about, that's not a confident position to be in. It also says to go and find people maybe who have done this type of work before and interview them and say, how was it? Did you enjoy it? Is is this something that, that uh, you know, you can tell me what are, what are the pros, what are the cons about this? As you get into it, it will be a pretty steep learning curve. You're going to discover there's parts of it that you don't necessarily like to do. And when you do, you need to go back to these people that you're making connections with and say, you know, how can I find someone to help me with this? How can I automate this or streamline this? Or do I need to do this little piece of it at all? So looking at those things, so it's, this isn't like doing a risky investment that's just passive income <clears throat> like you give somebody ten thousand dollars and then they're supposed to give you 20 back this is very actively working on something where you're learning and growing constantly in the process but it is leading to something that you love to do so pig natives you guys are entering your third year of seed planting this is the last of your third three seed planting years and so a lot of the seeds that you've been planting now you can see what's working and what's not and so a lot of what you're doing this year is saying where am i going to put my time energy and resources and you're doing this both by analysis and by gut feelings because Hey, you know, usually your intuition is strong and this year your intuition is just right through the roof. So you have this uh, knowledge that you need to follow your heart and as you do, things get better and better. But if you are swayed by everybody else, that can be a problem. Now, one of the things that's quite important, especially when it comes to your money for pig natives this year, is to recognize how to take something that you're doing and instead of saying, you know, like, oh, okay, I did, I did one ad and it brought me one client, so I made $100 versus I'm going to generously put information out there and see what doors open and then trusting your intuition to go through the right doors. So this is more about just dissolving this idea, letting go of this idea that if you put out a certain amount that you need to get a certain amount back because you have the potential for kind of this funnel of so much more, receiving so much more. But if you're focused on, you know, I put a dollar in, I want $2 back, you are going to run into problems. So it would be better to say, <clears throat> there goes the dollar. Now universe, bring me things that I need. The, the strongest energy that you have right now for money is how can you heal your relationship with money? As you do, then things are much, much better. Now, healing your relationship with money can be that you start a budget so that you actually have a certain amount that you can blow on anything guilt-free. It could be that you are looking at 
your parents' attitudes towards money and how those affect you. I mean, did they say you have to work hard at money or that money is evil or that, that money changes you into something you don't want to be? Looking at at what the messages were from your childhood and adjusting that energy to say, is this true? And even if it's true, is it is it valid? Is it helpful? Is it is it going to help me go be prosperous? And also it is about looking at other examples outside of the family. So you got all these messages when you were young to say, oh yes, you, you have to save your money. And the moment you have money, somebody's going to come and take it and all that to recognize, well, is that the experience that everyone has? Or is that just what I was told? Was that just my parents or my grandparents or my extended family's experience with money you know looking at this and saying well what do I want my story about money and my relationship with money to be as you do this then you can pull money from multiple sources because you are saying you know what I'm gonna have a different relationship with money itself and so then it will be easier for you to lean into opportunities you have a lot of opportunities when you communicate what you need uh, opportunities in sales opportunities for agreements and collaborations and things like that so you have lots of opportunities but if you're attitude about money is it comes into my pocket and then I instantly spend it, you know, and then you berate yourself later for spending it. This is not going to uh, help you uh, help you make money or accumulate money this year. So a, there's a similar energy around your investments where you may feel that some investments are challenging this year, that they are uh, difficult or that they just really got stomped in 2020. And so you're being very shy about doing investments. And all of that is reasonable until you have really looked at the investment and studied it and said, you know, what were the signs that got me in there? You know, what? Well, how did I make the decision? decision to get into the investment? What is, was my decision-making process to get in? What was my decision-making process to either get out of the investment or what caused me to stay in the investment way too long? So looking at what are the triggers? What are the implicit biases? What, what are the reasons that you made the choice? And when you do that, if you can improve your decision-making even just a few percentage points, it can materially change how you make passive income, how you do your business, how you make money in general. So that all said, there are going to be some investment opportunities or business opportunities for you. Uh, there's a couple of them coming that may be so big they feel overwhelming. And that is, you know, perhaps you have a little podcast, but then somebody wants to take you national or you have you have a, a small investment and then you watch that, you know, it does a five for one split and suddenly you have many more shares of it or something like that. So you do want to keep a really active eye on your money this year and opportunities are coming in when an opportunity comes comes in and it's really big, don't just dismiss it, but really think it through and say, you know, is this in line with what I want to do? Or is this just something so out of left field that I think I'll pass? When it comes to money you derive from career, where you're working for somebody else, your income looks quite stable, but it doesn't look like it's growing that much. And that can be a problem. That means that commissions are pretty level, that uh, the hourly rate that you're making is staying pretty steady, even that you're not getting a lot of extra hours. And so you can make some changes in this area by doing you know, prayer or visualization or affirmations or things like that to shift the energy energy because this is what can cause the boss to say, hey, a new position will be opening up. We think you're right for it. So they are opening the door for you. Now, that all said, it does also look like you're working pretty hard. And so it's good to work smart. Like if you're having trouble with procrastination, like if you're working at home, but having trouble getting to your desk because the kids are bugging you all the time, or uh, you are just not as into the job, it's time to look at it and rethink it using some positive questions. Like if you don't like your job, it's like, well, you know, what 
what can I still learn at this job? Uh, or what do I need to do at this job that is going to facilitate me getting a different job? You could also do the same thing, you know, with your investments or your small business is to say, uh, you know, like how, how can I take the time and energy that I'm spending on, you know, making my money over the course of a year and make that same money in one month. So it's about the quality of the questions that you're asking yourself this year and looking at your decision-making process. What causes you to take action? What causes you to procrastinate or hesitate? So when it comes to risky investments, which I count as either very unusual uh, things to be doing, unusual businesses, or that you have to make a big cash outgo to make something happen, you know, like a franchise or somebody, some friend is saying, please invest in my business. I, I see a lot of emotional volatility where you could feel like you're carried away by the crowd. And so you do want to be very mindful of that. If you go to a seminar and everybody is signing up for a super expensive course, you know, it would probably be best to just leave your wallet at home. If you are going to put yourself in any situations where emotions are going to be running really high, like your kids come to you and they say, oh, we want to do this, you know, crazy wacky business and we need, you know, you to sign off on all the loans. It's just a good idea this year to pause and wait, see? See if you can give yourself some time to investigate even, or maybe just say no right out of the gate because, uh, you know, they, because you have a year where risky investments are tied with some emotions, it's going to be very hard for you to assess whether this is really something you want to do. And so this is, again, like if you were investing in, uh, you know, getting some equipment for something, uh, the emotions are getting carried away. And so you're hitting that buy now button instead of thinking, oh, wait, you know, I could convert, you know, this, you know, this desk, I don't need this fancy desk. I can convert the desk I have to be useful for this. So, you know, when it comes to your riskier investments, I want you to stop, breathe, you know, meditate on it, uh, you know, write out the scenarios, look at where you might be biased in this area because your kids are coming to you with it and, and they want you to invest. Just be quite cautious this year. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Leave me any questions you have in the uh, uh, comments section and I'll see you in the next video.